Hi everyone, welcome once again to TDL Live. Ryan Ritchie, Adam Ford. How are you, Adam? I'm doing well. It is Monday, November 17th, 2008, and I want to we'll get to this a little bit later, but just for the folks who just tuned into the beginning, I don't know why you would, but uh, no show next week, sorry. Mm. I always get scared they're going to remember what else, what other options they have on a Monday night <laughs> when we go away for a week. <laughs> But uh, look for us to come back. <laughs> Are you? The next week. <laughs> okay, maybe not. Let's get in. But anyhow, so folks are, are, are chatting despite that. So uh, don't forget, anyone in Messenger, iChat, or um, the name, I guess, would be important. Yeah, probably. TD, TDL Live. Uh, I'd like to start the what show. Do we, what do we do here for, the, for those newcomers that we may have? On TDL Live, we look at the latest Apple news, rumors, and lifestyle news that affects you. And that's, that's right. from the last week. We put them into a fishbowl, cut it up, put it into a bowl. If we read it and it seems like it's old, it's probably the wrong side of the paper. <laughs> if we're in there, like, you know, Apple we announces we MacBook recycle. Air. We recycle. We, we do indeed recycle. Speaking of recycling, it's uh, Green Week on uh, Universal, the Universal oh. channels. Okay. Uh, green is Universal is their, is their slogan. Mm. And I caught a little bit of it the other night. It was funny to me that they had sent uh, Meredith Vieira from the Today Show mm -hmm. to Australia. Yeah, so it's a pretty pretty green trip. It's about it's about the biggest carbon footprint you can create in a in an aviation flight, right, right? To to kick off the uh, <laughs> green is universal. So she took a rowboat there, actually. I doubt it. Self powered. Maybe an Al Roker boat. Oh, Roker boat. Roker Should boat. I go in? Before you do, I have a okay. question for you. Um, we enjoyed the the pre show pizza tonight. We did. Uh, it takes a lot of carbs to put this show on. Mm hmm. Let's be honest. And I was picking up the, the, the pizza, and there was a tow truck in front of me. And I started thinking to myself, who tows the tow truck? A larger tow truck. But where does it end? I, I, I don't know. It ends at the junkyard, I guess. <laughs> who, would tow, who would then tow the larger tow truck? An even larger tow truck. See what I'm or saying? Or two tow trucks some, of the same size. Somewhere there is a universal tow truck the size of the universe. Can I please pick a, pick a story? Absolutely, go in, pick a story. <laughs> oh my. Alrighty. Make oh. it a good How one. How many times did you print on this? Is it, <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, oh boy. That's good. <laughs> Apple set to release Mac OS 10.5.6. When? Soon. Ah. When will then be now? Whoa! That's like the tow truck thing. <laughs> uh, anybody know what movie that's from? Anybody? TDL Live. AOL, usually it's Messenger. Kindergarten Cop. It's this usually not, Schwarzenegger movie. When movies. will then be now? Or uh, via feed soon. Feedback. I guarantee you. Feedback guarantee you this person. TDL Live Spaceballs. Bingo! I All didn't right. know that. It's true. It is true. Uh, so the release of 10.5.6 could be just around the corner. The update <laughs> is slated to deliver wide-ranging fixes, uh -huh. probably recommended for all users. All users to Apple's operating system. Uh, developer notes accompanying various seed versions of Mac OS 10.5.6 have been leaked by Portuguese language website. Hmm. <laughs> Hint.org. Where is it? Hint. Hint. They don't. They That's don't. an HMBT.org. Hint. They don't like the, the vowels in uh, Yeah, Portugal. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> um, uh, dun, dun, dun. What else is good about this? That's about it. That's it's about soon. it. It's coming soon. That really is about it. Um, but it did give me a chance to see if Spaceballs is available in the iTunes Music Store. And, and the soundtrack is. The movie is not. The mo uh, Yes, that's correct. And Spaceballs, the animated series, which I did not know existed. I did not either. Uh, season 1 is available as a season pass. Hmm. Didn't know that. Okay. Huh? That was worth it right there to go through 1056 soon. That's the kind of news we like. Apple to release new laptop someday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice and vague. Uh, How could we be wrong? <laughs> so we got here. Oh boy, do you enjoy the do you, do you enjoy the Indiana Jones? Yeah, I like the Indiana did you, Jones. Did you see the last movie? Did you see the last movie? No, I don't see the last movie. That's what I hear. Or if you see the last movie, mm -hmm. watch about forty-five minutes to an hour, then leave, and then leave, okay. and you'll think to yourself, "Oh, why am I leaving? This is a pretty cool movie." And that's where it should stay. Okay. Yeah, that's when you want to leave. About, the, about the time he slides on the cycle. Slides on the cycle. I don't want spoiler alert. When he slides on the cycle and then he's at the nuclear test rank, you need to 
be out of there. Okay. Anyhow, what does this have to do with the show, you ask? I have no idea. Uh, Lindy, at Lego Indiana Jones. Lego Indiana Jones? The, the Lego the, version of Indiana Jones? Correct, but in computer form. The game, the Lego oh. series. So he's really not made of Legos. Well, he's made of on-screen Legos. Which is not nearly the same thing, but continue. The Mac edition of Lego Indiana Jones is set to be released uh, November 28th. Uh-huh. And uh, the original, it's called Indiana Jones The Original Adventure. So apparently your little Lego man won't go into a refrigerator in a nuclear blast and survive. I did it! Ah! Oh! I ruined I it for everybody. You just did that. Oh well. Uh, <laughs> Feral Interactive's doing the port. The game has already been available for Windows and uh, console systems for quite some time. So okay. imagine that. Some things never change, some huh? Some things don't. We let it. Let the Windows folks pay to test it. <laughs> work out all the bugs. Work right? out all the kinks in the Lego man. And they port it to the Mac. Um, Should I give it a go? Sure. Go ahead. All right. I was gonna. I was gonna pedal something to the folks, but I don't know what it was. The blog or something. Something like that. Yeah, there's yeah. a blog. My goodness. It just looks... Just how many times can you print I, I over think, something? I think there's been a there's mistake. There's no way that that's useful. I think can anybody a, see that? I think there's been a mistake. I'm concerned that that might actually be news for this week. Print what? it over. <laughs> <laughs> if we run out early, you'll know. Oh, it. God. Uh, Apple flirting with another record quarter for Mac sales. Dot HTML. Uh, after spending 25 hours counting sales of iPhones and Macs at Apple's U.S.-based retail chain, that's a lot of counting, uh, investment bank Piper Jeffrey said it believes the company this quarter could meet or beat last quarter's record 2.6 million Mac sales total while again selling more than 6 million iPhones. Uh, firm's checks reveal that Cupertino-based company is selling... 28. 28 iPhone 3Gs per day through each of its retail stores, down from 95 units per day in July. Hmm. Hmm. So record max sales might not mean a record quarter overall right. financially. Right, right. The addition of Best Buy as an uh, authorized iPhone reseller in the U.S. should uh, combine to offset any slowdown in sales at the company's stores. So they're still expecting good things. Um, I was in one of the, uh, the flagship stores in New York. This past weekend, uh, did a little a little swing by, which I'll I'll uh, detail better in the blog. But uh, quite busy, quite Fifth busy at Fifth Ave. Can, can we say Fifth Ave? Yeah, yeah, it's Fifth Ave, and um, it was my first time at that store, and they were quite busy. And it wasn't just browsing or checking things out. There were a lot of people with bags, so mm -hmm. people were buying. Were people like slipping things into the bag? Was that what was going on? No, but the alarm did go off a few times. Okay. Yeah. You know, where the alarm went off all the time anyway. We're I mean. so we're such Apple veterans. Now it's time to put on the old man hat if you don't <laughs> mind. Uh, it's not made of old man, <laughs> but. We're so old, we remember when the Apple philosophy was to not have alarms in the store. We do? Oh, apparently it's just me. When was that? The stores opened, there were not, they did not have the electronic alarms. Now you did have the metal tethers on uh, iPods, but there were no electronic alarms until, uh, I'm going to say 2004, 2003. That was right at my... You, do you weren't, I keep thinking you were at launch. I was not. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I pointed disclosure in case you didn't know this. We both previously have worked for Apple. That's how could we read news off paper if we hadn't? <laughs> yeah. Really. That other people wrote. I mean, if you think you're qualified, <laughs> come on. But um, yeah, so there were there were no. Um, and I remember the original five and ten gigabyte iPods. Actually, the ones that were on display had a special um, hook like a, a drill hole, mm -hmm. and the, the, the steel tether had been attached inside. See, that I remember. That's weird. I don't know why I would remember that. Huh. 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 Maybe if we take a moment yeah. to think about it. But now you can hear those loud <laughs> chirping alarms. Everywhere you go. Any time of day. Right? Yeah. It feels Pretty like Costco. And, and if you don't, you don't hear it and you want to, just give it a good yank. <laughs> Someone will come running, maybe. Probably not, though. <laughs> Painted. <laughs> Have to review that to see see what happened there. Okay. So um, there was an election. Don't know if you heard. I did hear about that. Um, we have a new new president set to take office hmm. in uh, January. Very good. And his BlackBerry might not be going with him. Oh my! Say again? Yeah, I know. So here's the deal. Uh, 
President-elect Obama. You can have Obama. if you want to. You're not real, you're not real <laughs> thrilled with your BlackBerry. Uh, he apparently is a bit of a BlackBerry fiend. Likes uh -huh. to be on the BlackBerry. As, frankly, a lot of people are these days. Yes, yeah, yeah. In all kinds of corporate and governmental circles. Well, now there seems to be some concern that as president, mm -hmm. you can't have... That. You can't be connected to you the outside You can't be connected world. to the outside world. God you have to forbid. be in the bunker and hey. uh, let the folks around you tell you what's going on. I, it's so weird. It, it is. I mean, it's just the whole concept. And it goes it goes deeper, right? It goes deeper than just the Well, and then, and, then, and then it may also involve the Apple laptop because really this is about banning email. And right. uh, <clears throat> Obama's a, uh, an Apple user. Right. Uh, at least that's all indications. Bought MacBooks for the kids to stay in touch. I doubt he was, you know, firing up an Acer <laughs> and trying to use the webcam. Yeah. But uh, so basically the concern here is that the, the information isn't secure, it could be hacked. But I feel like when you become president, like, he can still use the phone. Right. So I don't think you give up, yes, you give up certain privacy rights. Like, he shouldn't be on email talking to somebody about what to do with the nuclear codes. I don't think he should be sending himself one of those emails with, with his password <laughs> to get into the government site so he can get in from home. Right. Although he's at home, the White House. <laughs> Anyhow. Um, but I believe you should still be able to have private communications, keep your Gmail account mm -hmm. or whatever, mm -hmm. to discuss with your friends and your family the things you would normally discuss. And if anything occurs, like there's an investigation or something, mm -hmm. the assumption is that those emails would have to be turned over in some manner. It's right. just ridiculous to me. I th it's tough. I mean, I, I think that it's, it's kind of ridiculous, but then you think about the the office that that he holds and it's like then you start thinking about all the information that you know god forbid you t accidentally <laughs> type to aunt sue or something you know and, and next thing you know it's it's the yeah. problem you got a problem on right your he replies all right Put that putin yeah. is wacky yeah. 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 next thing you know yeah, yeah you got it. then you got a problem so i i mean it's just crazy to think about that because everybody's so tied in mm -hmm. and to go from being able to be connected to mm -hmm. having kind of having your hands tied it's got to be that's got to be kind of weird well, and apparently the way it works it's okay for everyone else to have email so like right. someone off to the side can have email and he can be like hey could you tell could you right. send an email to so and so saying? Kind of weird. It's kind of silly. My concern is, how will he update his MySpace? Ah, <laughs> ah, I don't know. It's vital. It was vital. It's, there's an intern for that. Okay. There's an intern. I always, I thought he was doing it. Well, he was until now. Okay. Now the intern's doing it. Right. So you, the intern has to be trained. Cool. All then, right. Yeah. Okay. Let's. Uh, yeah. I believe it's your your turn. Hey. Time to go in. It's a beta. All right. Thanks for sticking with us, everybody, by the way. Where, why would you leave? <laughs> I know. Okay. Uh, has Google lost its voice? Question mark? No. Have we? Uh, so here's the deal. Well, you read that. Can I put in a drink order? Yeah. Could, Macro, can I get a Diet Coke happening on the set? Thank you. Diet Coke. Beep. Diet Beep. Coke. It's, <laughs> it's really, it's refreshing. <laughs> Trying to get a sponsor. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so here's the deal. So there was this whole thing about this Google, this Google app that was going to allow you to perform a search via voice mm -hmm. um, where you would, you download the app, then you, I guess you click the button or something like that. You talk into it. And it then sends the file to Google, a, vo a voice file to Google. Google then downloads that and sends the information back to your phone, which then perform performs a Google search. So it's searching by voice is the, is the whole the whole deal. Okay. And then there was this. So so this was the whole rumored thing that was going to be going on. It's supposed to come out on Friday, Friday. I believe. Um, never hit. Everybody said it would be out then today. Still not up as of this hour. So uh, I, I think long story short, uh, no special treatment for Google. Um, mm -hmm. They kind of get what everybody else gets. For and, better or worse. For better or for worse. Yeah. And uh, uh, no, no app as of this point. But I was kind of questioning how well this would work 
for for all of the the early adopters who have not upgraded. Yeah. Because there's a lot of data. To, well, I would imagine it's a lot of data to go back and forth. You know, processing up, down. Mm -hmm. So I, I fear we might be reaching, starting to hit the wall where those of us who have the original iPhone start to be excluded from, right. from some of these apps and, and really using them effectively. Yeah, or, or you get it, but it just doesn't really work well for you. If it works well and in a timely manner, although I, I, I have a lot of skepticism about that. I, I do that. as well, yeah. Um, I could see, you know, even when you have Wi-Fi, it might be quicker. You're yeah. out at uh, your local Starbucks or uh, Panera Bread. Is there, are they national? Do we the, the Panera? Panera? Are they everywhere? Or is that just a northeast I thing? Have I lost I folks? I think if I have a Panera. Or you're at uh, an In-N-Out that has Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. McDonald's. There you go. They're everywhere. They're they have everywhere. Wi-Fi. Yeah. Uh, to just say what it is you're, you're looking for. I, I don't want to get into this too far, but sometimes I'm searching for things I don't want to say out loud. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying. I, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, Flash is coming. Flash is coming. All right. Hell. To arm chips. Mm -hmm. Oh, where do I? I don't know. Where would I find an ARM chip? Uh, probably in a uh, device of some kind. In an iPhone. Uh huh. However, this does not mean that Flash is coming to the iPhone. As a matter of fact. Wait, what? But did you just say? I didn't know. You just say that? I know, but actually, it doesn't mean a whole lot of anything. This comes to us from Ars Technica. It's. Uh, so we're reporting on nothing. It, in a moment, a little bit. At the Adobe 2008 Max conference today, which we did not times. attend. We did not. Um, we did not. Did we get invitations to that? I, we, I may have lost mine in the middle. We, we, I don't. You know. I think that's with our government video expo uh, invitation. Right, right. But at any rate, uh, so Adobe announced a partnership to bring Flash 10 to uh, Air and Air, which is the Adobe development cross-platform thing, mm -hmm. to ARM processors that power many mobile devices. Hmm. But it was an announcement of an announcement because this essentially won't come until the second half of 2009. So they're announcing oh that second half of 2009. A year from now we'll be able to announce <laughs> yeah. that Flash is coming to ARM devices, which ironically is probably about the time the iPhone will switch to the Intel chip. So basically you should set up your iCal from a year from now where you can go back and revisit this this recording mm -hmm. or, or this however you're consuming this and then uh, <laughs> <laughs> Do you think there's going to be flying cars in a year and it's going to be on their hover display? It I mean, might it's be. probably going to be the same. It might be. Well, you could be consuming this on an iPod. That's you could true. be consuming this You're live. Right. You're right. You could be on your iPod live. Whoa. Yeah. You could not be. In a doing year, that. you don't know. You don't know. This is this show right here, right now? Oh, no. <laughs> right. What? Wow. Well. <laughs> space, whatever. <laughs> just made my brain itch. Sorry. Oh my god. So at, at any rate, bookmark, you know what I mean. I'm going to enjoy my Diet Coke. Yes. You know, I am a foot away from putting this on camera, but uh, I don't want my nickname to be Revision 3. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Eric Wilfer Wilford? Wilfred. 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 Is the new Mac business unit GM at Microsoft? Yes, he is. Uh, he's a 14-year veteran of the Microsoft Mac team, having most recently worked as a product unit manager of the Mac business unit Silicon Valley team based in Mountain View, California. In that role, he, he managed a team of engineers in developing Office for Mac and other Mac business unit products. So... Congratulations. Congratulations, Eric. And I just want to uh, let folks, well, should I let that cat out of the bag? Should we wait till we get a confirm on Let's that? Let's wait until we get a confirm. Okay, stay tuned for Teaser. more information on the Mac business unit. But I find it interesting that he worked, he was a product unit manager, yes. right, of MacBU, Silicon Valley team, that uh, he managed the engineers developing Office for Mac and other MacBU products. So my question is, mm -hmm. well, what's to be done in Redmond? What else does the business unit do that he has to go up there now? If they're actually developing these products in Silicon Valley and Apple's right there, you know, what's he going to do when he gets to Redmond? It sounds like all the action is uh, in Silicon Valley. Maybe we'll have uh, a chance to ask him. Maybe we will. Teaser. Maybe we will. By the way, don't forget, uh, you can watch the show, obviously, on the digitallifestyle.tv, but you can also subscribe via iTunes. Yeah. Go into iTunes. Don't tell Apple. 
They know we're there. It's not like Come we. On. It's they, not like we. we didn't they approved us. We they get the approved button. We didn't climb through the fence or anything. <laughs> Uh, just do a search for the digital lifestyle. You'll get this show. You'll get root access, the different iPhone app reviews, product reviews. It's all there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. just wanted to throw that out there. I think I'm going, even though I ended with that. Yeah, but you yeah, did yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're up. Okay. For sure. <laughs> Looks like that's doing some picking there. Yeah. That was deliberate. Again, if you're just joining us, no show next week. We apologize. So on the 24th, find something else to do, but uh, get done with it before December 1st. Because that's when we're back. That's an interesting question from, yes. the, uh, from the peanut gallery. Oh, uh, that's so just how I roll. The question in the iChat as to whether it's always hot here in the studio, as Adam tends to have the, the short sleeves. Yes. Well, it's not, no, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm on the cool side, but I, I run warm, so I tend to uh, short sleeve it from time to time. But I'll tell you the past He's two, like a rotary engine, he runs past, a little warm. The past two episodes, and the only reason why I know this is because we were on before we were on last week, so, the we were on, I was wearing my uh, my, my um, brown uh, hoodie zippy thing, yeah. which has long sleeves, uh -huh. and then I was wearing it again. So, so actually, maybe this viewer needs to... Uh, pay attention. Oh. Pay attention. Oh, I always hate to get rough with the viewers, but uh, that was an accusation. People are you... going to be going back into the archives to check the you validity of that. those statements. Clearly, clearly that person is not subscribing through <laughs> iTunes or they would know that. Uh, but thank you for the comment yes. at any rate. And you know, I just, it, it says to me action. It makes me think you're ready. I am. Like if you had I sleeves, am. you'd be rolling if, them up. If you, just, if you just dumped in another whole fishbowl of stories, I'd be ready to go. You'd go again, another go half right hour. And yet you're shooting down the 24 hour thing. Well, yeah, that's a bit much. Okay. My, shirt, my sleeves aren't that short. Okay. <laughs> oh wait, well, that was, well, go ahead. <laughs> I pulled the no show. So you, you did, you did do that. You did. All right, Apple quietly discontinues the 23-inch cinema display. Uh, discontinued status means that Apple is out of stock of the remaining new 20, the remaining new 23-inch cinema displays. And they're like, new 20-inch? It's just, it's not a very versus, good sentence. Versus but, used. But yeah. Don't play must blame Ars Technica. Yeah. Uh, we just read uh, Those waiting patiently to get their hands on a new 24-inch LED cinema display uh, have a good reason to believe it should be coming any day now. Uh, so, yeah, we, I mean, we knew that this was probably going to happen sooner than later. Um, it would have been nice to see a, a period of maybe having the 23-inch reduced in price while you transition. Yeah. Let me, you, you have some of the uh, behind-the-scenes inventory action. You know a little of the behind-the-scenes there. I love it. How, what, what is it. How does Apple manage it that they don't have these transition curves that everybody else seems to have? Where well, they, they don't they don't really need to. I mean, there's no there's no reason to to overbuild and then have to sell at a lower price mm -hmm. to just to move out your inventory. You don't really want to keep the things in hand too long. And, and you know, even if people are still going to want them, are they going to want them at the same the same rate that they're going to want a new one or right. you know something else? So there's if you if you can make enough to to get you through the the transition. Or, or close there too, mm -hmm. and then and still sell at full price. Full price selling is what you do. I mean, that that's just retail 101. You know, mm -hmm. you, you want to have only so much inventory on hand, and then uh, you know you want to sell it at full price if possible. And they sell at full price just about all the time. Well, so. it seems like they've gotten even better at this because in the retail stores, you used to be able to go in and when a new product was released, yep. say a faster laptop, you could buy the last model reduced mm -hmm. or a even better deal would be the floor models that were out. Right. Any open box stuff now is not sold in store. Yeah. And it seems like the day that the new product is out, that's that's the product. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was always pretty good though. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was never like tons and tons of inventory on the old models. It was... You know, a few like like the towers, for example. There would always be like a few left over, and you know, if you if you got there on a good day, you you know, you'd be able to nab one like just after the the announcements or mm -hmm. some something to that effect. So they've always been pretty good at it, and and it seems like you know the the more that the more they're in the in the business that they're in, you know, they uh, they they get better at it. Pretty so. dang impressive, though. It, no, it is absolutely yeah. Is this me? Yes, it is. Okay. 
Don't forget, again, I mentioned earlier the blog. Head over to the digitallifestyle.tv, click mm -hmm. on blog. Adam told you right here that he's going to have that story for us this week on That's Fifth right. Avenue. I, I said it. <laughs> <laughs> um, forget Firewire. Get out of here. Get out. I will not Apple's say that. Apple's telling you to do that. I know, if they sold everybody on it. <laughs> We're talking now about USB 3. USB 3. Point two's just not enough. The US, the cleverly named USB 3 promoter group. What do you think they do? They don't hide their lobby, do they? They nap a lot. They revealed today, Monday, November 17th, the full specifications for the new USB 3 standard. Mm. It's going to be 10 times faster than USB 2, supply more power to devices. It's USB 2. This is, this is a little weird. It's USB 2 backward compatible, but not USB 1 backward compatible. Left in the dark. Which isn't because USB 2 is USB 1 compatible. So you would think USB 3 then would have to be USB 1. I'm no compatibility expert, but that sounds reasonable. Thank you. If you think about it, it all goes back. It's just like the tow trucks. You have a little one, and a bigger one, and a biggest one. USB 3, 2, 1. At any rate, uh, but... It's like you're describing like the food chain in the ocean. <laughs> it's like the little plankton, fish. Sure. you get eaten by the little fish, yeah. you get eaten by the, the bigger fish, exactly. you get eaten by the medium-sized fish. Yeah. It all ends up on my plate. So. so USB 3, you're not going to see it uh, too soon, though. And by the time it actually does come out, we should be ready for FireWire uh, 3200, which I imagine which no will one be will be Which will be included on nothing. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be on the Mac Mini, curiously <laughs> yeah, enough. Right. Uh, the 3200 will be interesting to see if Apple, on the Pro end even, continues yeah. to go with the new FireWire standards or just says, well, that USB 3 is, is good enough. I think they should come up with a different naming convention, like not USB 1, 2, 3, 4. Mm -hmm. like, like USB, damn, that's fast. Or like, you know. <laughs> USB. U USB Hot Rod. Or, yeah, okay. You know, USB you know. Max? No. I don't you know. know. They got the Y Max. Extreme? No, I know. Just something, something catchy, something, something that, that you know gets right the kids, away. Like all okay. hopped up about it. Not right. Like so grandma can be like, and like, I've got a damn you know? that's fast device. Will <laughs> yeah, that work yeah. with this? Holy, it's <laughs> yeah, fast. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. They can do better. Okay. Come on, creative minds out there um, at the at the commission or whatever it was. <laughs> As usual, <laughs> what are you talking about? You were saying the, the USB commission. USB three promoter group. Whatever. That's my point. Uh, as usual, I don't know if that's true or not. You guys can run the stats. You get the honor of the last. <laughs> it's probably about 50-50 if I had I to guess. I don't think that I'm usually on the last story, but maybe somebody could uh, go through could, all the archives. Let us, come let us know about that. Um, this is oddly not printed on something reused. Uh, Apple launch aggressive Black Friday sale. Mm. Shenanigans, but let's get into it. Uh, as Black Friday sales begin to leak on the web, mm -hmm. is that true? There are Black Friday sales leaking on the web already? <laughs> well, the, the flyers are, are leaking. Are they really? Yes, they are. I hmm. Yeah, you've been off blackfridaydeals.info. I'm serious. I think that's the site that Blackfridaydeals.info. Nice. I think okay. that's the site that uh, compiles them all. And I gotta tell you, there's nothing real compelling right now. So well, far. stay tuned. Uh, expert at Barclays Capital say they expect for Apple to counter rival PC vendors' promotions a one-day sale more aggressive than usual, offering deep discounts on a number of Mac models. Low-cost notebooks top the list of the most heavily discounted electronic items poised to dominate this year's sales, with Dell planning to offer a $299 Linux model via its website. There are a few other $299 offers as well for yeah. laptop. So so will we see a 799 last year MacBook? <laughs> no. I don't think we're going to see I don't think we're going to see They'll anything. Throw in mobile on, me. Well, mobile me will be 69. But here's the thing. When was when's the last time? And and I'm I'm talking like a sale on Apple hardware where it's not like you, like the shuffles discounted five dollars, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. like an actual true sale on, on <clears throat> right. Apple hardware. Right. When is the last time on a Black Friday that you've seen that? It's happened. It's happened, but it's on a sp very specific. Like I remember the iMac was a hundred dollars off. I think 
It's usually not like across the, the line. And it's not deep. It's not deep. It's, it's usually... And, and, I mean, it's electronic, so it's not going to be too deep. Right. But, but it's usually about equal to the student discount, which a lot of people already right. get, get the computers for. My problem with what uh, Apple does in particular, they don't have a circular. They don't... You don't know until that day. Right. And in the case of... I, I don't know if you were there. The, the first uh, holiday I worked at an Apple store... It wasn't until 6 o'clock that evening. Mm -hmm. During the day, it was normal pricing. And then you close the store, and people would be in like, well, what's going to be in sale an hour? And be like, oh, I can't tell you. And we didn't yeah. know. It was right. ridiculous. Right. But my point being, I don't quite understand how discounting helps you if people don't know that you're going to be discount like they don't know what's going to be on sale and they're like look right. i can either go and get this laptop that i know is 299 mm -hmm. i mean it's a bad example because it's not apples and oranges but you're asking people to take it on faith that the thing they want will be the thing that you put on sale that year yeah i mean maybe they'll surprise maybe they'll surprise this year and and put a wider array of products on sale and it'll be something a little more tantalizing than it normally is but i don't know i we don't usually see anything if history, too crazy and compelling, right. and so maybe this year will be the exception. But maybe it'll be I don't know. Maybe it'll be thirty dollars off an Airport Express. Hey, usually it's only twenty. Hey, so you heard it here. And don't forget, Monday is Cyber Monday. No, two next two Mondays. Yeah, not yeah, yeah, yeah. After Thanksgiving, sure. No, be, for the Monday before things. Uh -huh. No, the Monday after things. Uh -huh. Hey, everybody. It's been a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, don't forget feedback at the digitallifestyle.tv. Check out the blog. Check out the reviews. Parting thoughts? Um, happy holidays. Because we're not here next week. We'll see you again in two weeks. <laughs> Thank you, Matt Girl. Two weeks. We'll be back. Until then, farewell. And uh, have, have, have fun. Get out there. Put yourself out there. Bye, everybody. Bye.